Hi there, everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Classy Podcast. I am your host, Mary Sturgill. Remember, this is the podcast that's brought to you through a partnership between the Hill Institute for Innovation and Entrepreneurship and the Communication Studies Department here at Furman University. Today, our guest is Andrew Predmore, who is the Executive Director of the Shy Institute for Sustainable Communities here at Furman University. Andrew, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. I'm excited to, to be here and excited to talk about innovation and entrepreneurship. Yeah, absolutely, because you guys have some innovative programs, which we're going to talk about. Um, but you're, you've only been here a year, right? Not even a year. Even getting a year. close. So I started um, October 5th or 6th of last year. Yeah. So getting close to a year. Yeah. How are you finding it? Oh, I love it. I love <laughs> Not it. to put you on the spot. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can't exactly answer like, oh, I'm just, just, just no right. good at all. But no, I truly <laughs> am enjoying the position. And, um, you know, I tell people that I really have one of the most fun jobs there is out there because we do a lot of good. Yeah. Um, and really, you know, my biggest challenge is trying to figure out what in the world to say no to because mm -hmm. all the sustainability work that comes our way is, is good work and work that's needed in the world. So um, lots of opportunity yeah. and lots of good things to do. So let's talk about that because you have some innovative programs that you guys are working on. Can you kind of, I don't want to say just list them all, but kind of talk about them, list them, and then I want to jump in. That there's some that I want to want to dive into. Well, it would de it would depend on how you define innovative, mm -hmm. right? Um, but we have a lot of programming. I couldn't possibly list them right. all for you. But um, <laughs> just the you know, I, yeah, I would say like just in, in a broad sense, like the Shy Institute is working on and off campus mm -hmm. on sustainability issues, and we're looking to make a difference in both places, mm -hmm. right? And and along the way, we engage students and faculty in that work. Mm -hmm. So you know, I, I'll mention just a couple of things going on on campus and okay. a couple of things off campus, and excellent. then we can we can see where that takes us. Yeah, but um, on campus, our biggest push right now is um, is climate action planning for the university. So. Uh, Furman University has a carbon neutrality commitment for 2026. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really difficult to meet that commitment. And so we are really intentionally working on how are we going to pursue that commitment? Are we going to need to reset sort of when we're going to be carbon neutral? And what is a pragmatic pathway right. to reduce carbon emissions? Because we're in here right now and the lights are on exactly. and we're using energy right now. Yeah. And so that's a, that's a real challenge for any university and right. any large organization. So yeah. you got to be innovative. You got to think outside the box. Um, and we want to do it also in a way that supports the broader Greenville community. So mm -hmm. um, that's a that's a big thing that we do on campus. And anything that we do on campus, we're always engaging students in that. So mm -hmm. that we have a, a really vibrant student fellowship program. We also have a farm, as you know, mm -hmm. right? And that's an important thing on campus for students to to uh, get their hands dirty and see what a closed loop food system looks like. So we'll probably get to that as an innovation. But yeah. like, you know, we. We pick up the food waste that comes out of the back of the dining hall. Mm -hmm. We take it to a compost facility. We compost it. The compost comes back to the garden. The garden grows produce that is then sold to Bon Appetit. So we really have been working on that this summer uh, and over the next year to scale that up and see how much we can produce yeah. and have students learn along the way. So those are two things on campus. So quick question about that. Is the goal then to produce so much that then we can s sell it to local farmers and stuff? No, okay. I mean, not yet. Uh, okay. I mean, the goal right now is to produce as much as we can that will then be served in the dining hall. So, gotcha. if, so I'm going to go to the dining hall in a few minutes when we're done with this. Right. And you're going to, and I'm going to see like all those heirloom tomatoes mm -hmm. that we grow. I mean, hundreds of pounds of tomatoes this summer. Yeah. Uh, we're getting close to $15,000 worth of produce that's gone to Bon Appetit over nice. the summer. So that really is healthy local food going to our students, our faculty, mm -hmm. our staff right yeah. now. In the future, we might do uh, CSA or do some right. other things where that we sell that in other places. But for now, it's just going yeah. to, to the dining okay. hall. What about the compost? What's the goal for that? The compost, uh, as you might imagine, it, we produce quite a bit of organic material, yeah. right? And like, so students out there and everybody listening, you know, be conscious of, of what, you know, sometimes our stomachs are bigger than, I, what's the saying? We can, our eyes are bigger than our stomachs. Yes, that's yeah, what I was looking for, <laughs> right? And, but then that, that translates into food waste. Yeah. Um, so be aware of that. But so there's a lot of that. And then there's a lot of uh, leaf litter and organic material that comes off the of campus. So we, mm -hmm. we blend that, right? You have to get the carbon to nitrogen correct mm -hmm. and compost that. So we have quite a bit of it. And we're going to start to sell that as a way to raise funds for, for, the, uh, for the Shy Institute. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
to. That's kind of what I meant when I said uh, for the farmers, like local farmers. Who who are we selling that to? Uh, right now, we're not. We haven't even until now this podcast. Yeah. I'm not even marketing that we're selling okay. that, yeah. and we've sold you know several thousand dollars. Right. Yeah. But we're looking to scale that up because we have a lot of organic material and a lot of yeah. finished compost. The yeah. one little bottleneck we have though mm -hmm. is is filtering the compost. Right. Um, so we can't have uh, plastic and right. forks and things that right. sometimes end up. So we have students out there sometimes filtering that yeah. so that we can sell. I've seen some of the pictures the students have posted about people throw accidentally throwing away their forks and stuff in the DH. Yeah, and so. the DH has a tough job, right? Yeah. Like anybody that's been in there, things are moving quick. Oh, yeah. And sometimes, uh, you know, a fork or things just end up in the wrong place. Right. But um, we'll solve that. We're going right. to filter it. and. Right. Uh, yeah. So I want to talk. I want to turn now and talk about some of the outward-facing programs. Yeah. So you have the sustainability leadership initiative. My, initiative yep. Thank yep. you. Yep. Um, tell us about that. Yeah. So um, you know, think about it this way: like, like for for the world, for society, for South Carolina to become a more sustainable place, we've got to work through large organizations, right? And so, um, and large organizations have to change, just like Furman has to adapt. Other organizations, businesses across the state need to adapt. And so Furman and the Shine Institute partners with a nonprofit called Sustain SC. Mm -hmm. And each year we do a training that lasts, there are five different sessions throughout the year across the state of South Carolina with around 25 business, nonprofit, and public sector professionals that sign up to be in that. Mm -hmm. um, and we're teaching them about the core aspects of sustainability. Um, we take them out into the field and show them some of the challenges. And what we want to do is create a network of sustainability leaders across the yeah. state that are going to move us forward. So yeah. that's um, that program. This will be its third year. Mm -hmm. We have a really great class of people involved with that, real yeah. uh, leaders across the state. And, uh, and it's been fun putting together that program. Like we're yeah. taking them out to um, Wadey's Island, which is a big conservation win. It's an under conservation easement. Mm -hmm. It's a barrier island off the coast near Myrtle Beach. Mm -hmm. And so we will take them out there and show them like, this is an amazing thing. This is amazing that, that, um, that it's protected in perpetuity. But they will also have to grapple with the fact that, like you all might have heard on the news this week, that Myrtle Beach is one of the fastest growing cities in the U.S. Right. right? So there's all that urban development in around that area. Mm -hmm. And so those students that are in this program those professionals, we're going to grapple with that. Yeah. Like, and hopefully that's going to help create better leadership and sustainability. Yeah, for the yeah because those people are the people who will then go back to their companies, and it has to come to from the top down, right? right. So that's that's a great way to network. I like that. That's very innovative thinking there, Andrew. Okay, all right. We're going to count that as innovative. I like. I, li that. I like yeah. that because yeah. a lot of. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of people in in, in the industrial uh, side of things don't think like that, right? Right. Unnes yeah. Necessarily. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think th that is changing, I but do. but you're yeah. right, and and I think that the innovative thing about that is is getting leaders embedded in organizations mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. then can start to flip systems to more sustainable ones. Exactly. And that's so what. That's what. Getting them to flip the systems. That's yeah. exactly what I was talking about. Um, the you have one with manufacturers a program with manufacturers yeah. talk about that one yeah so this this really was you know you you um i don't always love the word pilot but how about demonstration Excellent. project um this summer where we worked with the south Car south carolina manufacturers extension program mm -hmm. and they know that th there's like seven thousand or so small to medium-sized manufacturers across the state of south carolina and a lot of what they do is supply the really big manufacturing businesses in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. So think of the, you know, the big name industries or companies that you all know, like BMW or Michelin right. or Volvo or, or Millican across the upstate, right? right? right. So they have many, many small suppliers. Mm -hmm. and, and those small suppliers are under some pressure now to understand their carbon footprint you know, because they supply these bigger businesses that have commitments to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, knowing this, I'm like, all right, there's a, there's a niche here for the Shine Institute, right, yeah. to step in and roll our sleeves up mm -hmm. and see if we can help some of these small to medium-sized businesses understand their carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. And it helps their business because then they can say to their customer, their large customer, hey, we're working on it. Right. It helps us because we got students who need to learn carbon accounting as a mm -hmm. skill, Yes. right? So there's a really nice win-win. Um, and so we did a couple of those this summer. They were fantastic. We worked with a French company called Chaumara, mm -hmm. which is located mostly in, in Anderson County, and they make um, advanced textiles. 
And then we worked with a company that's really right down the road here mo called Mosaic Color and Additives. You're right, right. So we had two students do their greenhouse gas inventories yeah, for them, yeah. which is the first step. Like you cannot reduce your impact on climate without first understanding where your emissions come from that are driving that impact. And so that's what the students did Absolutely. is, yeah. is gay, you know, we worked, it was very much like a client consulting type experience mm -hmm. for our students. Yeah. Um, which is super valuable for them. Yeah, that's and then, the permanent advantage right there. It is, yeah, and then we hand works. to the student, I mean to the student, we hand to the company like a report. Right. Here are your emissions, here's where they come from, and they can start thinking about, okay, what can we do to lower our emissions? Mm -hmm. How can we market ourselves as a, as a more sustainable company as a result of taking this first step? So we're, that was a great project, and we're looking forward to potentially scaling that up Absolutely. Uh, yeah. next summer. And I think, yeah. I, I love the, the fact that you, because when we think of, of, of people who need to really work on sustainability, we do think of the large companies, right? Because sure. they probably have the most greenhouse gas emissions, et cetera. Um, but I love the uh, reaching down to the smaller companies who are supplying the bigger companies, because that really, I think, will make their partnerships stronger. It should, and it, it, should. It, it should create an advantage for those first movers in yeah. the small to medium sized manufacturing because mm -hmm. they can say to their larger customers, hey, we're, we're, take, we're serious about it, we're taking right. this first step. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we, we um, you know, sometimes people think sustainability shouldn't or can't work with the business sector, and I think mm -hmm. instead we need to be innovative and mm -hmm. think about how we can support the change that needs to happen. Right. Right. Um, and so that's what we tried to do. Because we're a part of that community, so oh, why not, I mean, right? We're wearing clothes and exactly. we consume <laughs> things, and so right. we're all a part of this economic system. And, yeah. the, and the challenge of sustainability is how are we going to meet human needs within the boundaries of what, what our ecosystems can provide. Right, right. You know? I so. love it. Um, the, uh, what kind of obstacles are you facing with some of these things, that, some of these initiatives that you're starting? Um, my own ability to keep up with all of it. Uh, um, yeah, like, like I mentioned, som sometimes there's more opportunity than, mm -hmm. than I can capitalize on. I mean, we're also involved with some really um, substantial grant work, research work mm -hmm. on climate and climate resilience in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I have staff that are helping with that. Right. We're also involved with, um, with athletics and athletics at Furman and starting to think about you know, how can we make those events, um, uh, move them towards zero waste or zero mm -hmm. landfill events. And so we have some really, I don't know if you want to get into that. I do. I we have some, do. I think some yeah. really exciting things that we're just starting this year. So I'm not going to say we're going to finish the thing, but right. my biggest challenge is keeping up, keeping all these things yeah. going. And luckily I have a great group of people yeah. that I work with. That, because if you think about all of the waste from the concession stands and even when people are tailgating and all of that kind of stuff, um, that is a huge area that could be fixed, right? So how are you, what, what kinds of things are you talking about? Yeah, um, like I said, we're gonna take incremental steps just right. because of our own bandwidth. But right. I think students, um, we have an eco rep program and those are mm -hmm. students that um, work in the residence halls here at Furman to encourage sustainable behavior mm -hmm. among their peers. Mm -hmm. They're gonna help us with this athletics thing because we, we need some person power right. behind this right. because there's some education. But, um, you know, you think about like, just think of yourself at a football game or a basketball game and what's served there, mm -hmm. you know, and you start to go through sort of the inventory of what you could consume there. And then you start to understand the challenge, right? So you get a hot dog, what does the hot dog serve to you in uh, maybe some sort of cardboard type of thing? Mm -hmm. Well, could that become a compostable? I guess cardboard is compostable, but could, mm -hmm. could making sure that everything that, that the food is is served is compostable, mm -hmm. and then you got to figure out how to compost it, collect right. it, and you got to you got to train people to not put what's compostable into the landfill bin. Right. Um, so one of the cool things we're doing, and it is with that company Mosaic Color and Additives, they have a compostable fork yeah. um, that they're working on, and it's sourced from U.S. materials, so it's not made in China. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to pilot using that in men's basketball games mm -hmm. this winter. Um, and we'll collect it and compost it, firm and compost. Yeah, I love um, that. So there, that's so, the innovation right there. Working yeah, with the we're yeah. working with the company. Yeah. You know, so we'll start with basketball. Mm -hmm. um, our students are also going to be doing our green belt students that live in the cabins along the lake uh -huh. are going to do some waste audits. So they're going to help us this year understand the waste stream that I didn't describe perfectly there for you at each of the athletic events, mm -hmm. so that next year we really understand well like what needs to happen to move towards 
nothing is going to the landfill. It's either recyclable or compostable. Right, right. And that'll be the, that's the ultimate goal with those. So cool, really yeah. cool stuff happening there. And um, just thankful to have athletics yeah. just super supportive and that's excited it. about it. And, um, and to have Mosaic Color and Additives also right. Like here, use our product. Yeah, I heard. Was it, it their CEO yeah. talking about that fork? Yeah, and, and, and test it in our yeah. compost. Yeah. Like they're they're very open, transparent about working together yeah. on that. And that is probably, you know, uh, uh, I'm not in innovation and entrepreneurship, but that's a hallmark of good thinking, right? Right, that like, is innovative thinking. Like think yeah. about yeah. systems. Think about being open and transparent and creating partnerships. So. Exactly. Exactly. Um, the one of the things that I find troubling is that we do have people in this country who don't believe that we need to do these things, right? That mm -hmm. that we don't necessarily need to be sustainable. How do you change the minds of people who aren't taking those actions that all of us can take, um, or who don't have that same philosophy? Well, I would say a couple things to that, and you're right. You're right. That's a challenge. If you watched the Republican primary Absolutely. debate the other yeah, night, right. you saw yeah. someone say that climate change is a hoax. Well, right. you know, 99.99% of scientists do not agree with that, right? It's established fact as much as science can be fact at this right. point that, that climate change is real and it's driven by humans, right. okay? But, but to your question, which is like, how do we start to convince people? Yeah. Um, I think one thing to do is kind of what I mentioned earlier, which is um, all people are embedded in an economic system that currently is not terribly sustainable. Right. It's based on a take from the earth, make something, waste it model. Mm -hmm. And we have to change that. Yeah. That is a big systems change. So I don't think the way to do it is to place a lot of guilt on other people because a lot of times we're we're embedded in a system where it can be very challenging mm -hmm. to live sustainably that's not to say you shouldn't do what you can do yeah i really think you, sh you should but don't let's not pin all the blame on individuals mm -hmm. instead you know let's look at systems change let's look like i talked about let's look at training leaders to work in organizations that can mm -hmm. flip larger systems mm -hmm. so that it's easier for you and i to go to a football game which i think is a you know, I, I like sports, Absolutely. but I don't want to create a bunch of waste when I'm there. So create a system when I get there so I'm not generating so much waste. Yeah. Right. So there's systems work to do. The other thing I would say is, you know, you got to start talking to people about these issues in ways that matter to them. Yes, absolutely. So like, you know, when we talk about climate change, you know, if you're a sports fan, I don't want to go to um, a football game at 12 o'clock in South Carolina in September, <laughs> right, um, and I think that is going to be a more, more and more difficult, unpleasant experience if you look at the climate models. Mm -hmm. So that's something that a lot of people care about. It's, it's part of our culture in the right. South is to go to college football games. Right. We need to do something about it. youth sports are a big thing. Like, mm -hmm. is it safe to practice in some of the heat and humidity that we're going to encounter? So talk to people about things that matter to them as a yeah. starting point instead of hitting them over the head with you got to change your right. and guilt and, and all that. And I think people will, will start to see that. Um, so that's good. Yeah. That's audience, right? You got to know your audience, yeah. right? Yeah, I, right? I tell my students that all the time. Yeah. Well, good. Whatever I'm, story you're telling, start with the audience. Yeah, you got to know how to tell it based on who your audience is. Right. Yeah. And, I mean, I'm no communication yeah. scholar, but I've, <laughs> I've been in sustainability long enough to know exactly uh, that trick. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, um, I was looking at some of your history, Andrew, and you, so I'm going way back a little bit. In uh, undergrad, you were a politics major? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And I was like pull, seeing if I was pulling that out of my memory correctly. That was good. Yeah. How has that helped you in what you do now? Oh, I mean, obviously your PhD and your master's and everything is <laughs> in sustainability, but. <laughs> yeah. That's an interesting question. I, you know, I think. Probably some of the, the answer that I just gave yeah, you, you know, that, politics yeah. is about speaking to audiences mm -hmm. and convincing audiences. So mm -hmm. I don't know that I, without you asking that, me that question, would I have attributed the ability to answer that question to that experience? But right. maybe. Yeah. Um, I think my undergrad at UVA was really more about like critical thinking mm -hmm. and, um, you know, a, a liberal arts education. Right. I was a person that did not know what I wanted to do. Um, I knew I was interested in, in political science and things like that, but 
I was also interested in environment at that time, but I hadn't figured out environment sustainability wasn't really a thing. I, right. I hadn't figured out what my avenue would be there, and I think um, I know at Furman we're we're better at that now, yeah. helping young people see the array of professions out there. Yeah. But for me, it had to be like a a winding you path. Had to find it, yeah. Yeah, and I had that to. Was the same way. Yeah, you know, I get and, that. Yeah. Yeah. The was there something um, that you came across, or some event, or something that kind of spurred you into say to say, okay, this is the direction I want to go in, and I want to get my higher education, get my master's in that, and 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 go on to do, be where be where you are today. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it wasn't like I didn't read something, although there are right. certain things that I read that were impactful. Um, I think of, if you haven't read Aldo Leopold, mm -hmm. a, a Sand, County, Sand County Almanac, you should read that. Mm -hmm. um, it's both beautiful and was really forward thinking mm -hmm. and still applies today. But it didn't really come from reading or studying. It came from like when I was a kid growing up in Spartanburg, South Carolina, mm -hmm. my dad would take my brother and I um, up into Pisgah National Forest and we would go backpacking. He took us out west. We, mm -hmm. we went out to... Um, Yosemite, we went to Yellowstone and Grand Teton. Right. When I was ten, 10 years old, I was backpacking in the Tetons. That's amazing, I love the Tetons. Yeah. And so you start with like that just, in, and I found interviewing students over the years, both mm -hmm. at Indiana University where I was before and at Furman, you ask them like, where does your passion for sustainability come from? Usually there's some sort of connection with nature. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's what it was. Yeah. Right, and then ever since then, I've been trying to figure out how to make an impact. How do we save this? How, how, how do we? How do we create a safe space for yeah. humanity to thrive without messing up what we got? Yeah, yeah, so. for sure. So what what has been the most rewarding thing in your career path that you've, because you were in sustainability at Indiana but now, and now here, for, of course, at Furman? Hmm, that's a good one. Um, hmm. You know, I I could talk about like, different sort of things that were accomplished either at at Indiana University or even at Millikan. I was there for a year. Mm -hmm. um, they were one of the first 50 companies to have science-based targets mm -hmm. for reducing their greenhouse gas emissions yeah. approved targets. So that was really cool. Just not to say I did that, but I was a part oh, of that. Part of it, yeah. That was awesome. Um, we did some cool things at IU around waste and recycling like that that system was a r really not functioning well mm -hmm. and we set that on a path to do much much better and that was a big you know that's a big campus so right. i'm very proud of some of those accomplishments but i mean it, it may sound a little bit cheesy but truly like when a student that worked with me like as a kind of like here we have student fellows at iu we had sustainability interns when they come back and i can see on linkedin that they're mm -hmm. working on these things or they ask for a recommendation and i'm blown away by like what job they're about to get yeah um man that's awesome that's right cool. and, and totally to know i had that. a little bit of piece of that yeah, yeah. um particularly ones that i work really really closely with mm -hmm. that's really super rewarding yeah, yeah. Um, so I, it's a mixed bag you know lots of things yeah. i totally get that because i feel that way with my students you know when i see yeah. them succeed so yeah. um the uh, i'd like to um kind of leave our listeners with a blueprint that they can take into their lives no matter what the conversation is about there's always hmm. some advice or yeah. s just some nuggets of 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 information that they can use. Um, what would you give to our listeners as something that they could take and do right now today, if they so chose, um, to help in sustainability? Oh gosh, I cannot give you just one I thing. Know there's a ton, I think we, we kind of covered, you know, it a little bit, but if you're passionate about, I have students, students, more at IU, and increasingly, I think, will happen at Furman, would come ask me that kind of question. Mm -hmm. Like, what should I do? Yeah. I care. What yeah. should I do? Yeah. And um, there's all those, like, personal things that you can do, right? Mm -hmm. And for college students, that can be hard because you're not in control of your living space necessarily. So, right. like, you and I, we might ought to look at the energy consumption in our households. Right. And I'm forever the, looking at that. There's the Inflation Reduction <laughs> yeah. Act, right? So there's a lot of incentives yeah. out there for solar or battery, and I'm looking mm -hmm. at that at my house right now. So... Those are things, but college students, eh, you don't really have a lot of control over where you live, so do what you can. Yeah. But I think the other thing is think about this as a system. Yeah. If you wanna make a difference, some of the, the things that you need to do are learn to talk to people about mm -hmm. these issues and be willing to do it. Mm -hmm. 
and we talked about some tips there, That's like right. approach the audience with what they might care about. Um, but also don't be afraid to be politically engaged yeah. because that's probably the highest level systems change that you, that students and any of us can get involved with. Yeah. So if you have a yeah. voice on this, use it. That's a good point. I didn't even think about that, but that's yeah. a great It's not all idea. technical stuff. Yeah. It's, it's about driving yeah. social and collective, collective yeah. action. Yeah. I want to circle back around to Furman again. What are we doing well and what do we need to do better? Hmm. So like, are you talking on campus or on campus? campus? On campus, uh, as 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 you know, our goal in our sustainability plan is to reduce our carbon footprint. How are we doing, basically? Well, so you know, I mentioned one thing that we do exceptionally well, which is that closed loop or yeah. circular system with food and food mm -hmm. waste, and that's fantastic. Right. Um, and we'll be looking to scale out those issues. So, as I talked about, compost and mm -hmm. athletics and catering, and so those are things we do well, and we're going to do even better. Um, we have nice greenhouse gas reductions relative to our 2008, 2007, 2008 baseline. It's right. Our greenhouse gas emissions have dropped like 37, 38 percent. Which is great. Which is, yeah. which is very good. Yeah. Um, we have uh, geothermal on different parts of campus. We have a, a good sized solar installation across mm -hmm. Poinsett Highway. So Furman has done a lot of things. And, and so and the facilities folks, Jeff Redderson and his team deserve a ton of credit yeah, for that. Yeah. We have um, five buildings that are LEED certified. Am I right in that number? Oh, I don't know. Okay. Don't know. Uh, well, that, we'll, look at, we'll look it up and if you want to know. Just email right. me. I'll I know, find we, out I know sure. we had the first LEED certified did. building in the state of South Carolina. Yeah, Isabella did a story on it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Our um, podcast producer did a story yeah. on it. Yeah. Um, but what can we do better, yeah. right? I talked about the climate action planning. Like we need to get to a point where we're looking at our greenhouse gas emissions year over year, mm -hmm. and um, we're transparent about that. And we have a strategy to reduce those emissions year over year. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where we're headed. It's as I mentioned to you, it's 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 challenging. It, yeah. it, we're not going to make those changes without careful planning, which has already started. So if you yeah. think about Every one of, or maybe not every one of, but most of our buildings, this one included, has a natural gas boiler mm -hmm. that heats the building. Yes. Well, there are emissions associated with natural gas consumption, so we need to move away from that. But you can't just snap your fingers because Furman has money in that infrastructure. Mm -hmm. right? That wouldn't make financial sense. So you, instead, you got to look at, well, what's the life cycle of the natural gas boilers at each building and which ones are coming to the end of there? Mm -hmm. And then what are we going to do there? We're going to electrify that building, the heating, and what's that going to cost? And so that's the kind of really hard work that's ahead. Yeah. And I don't know, I'm just really excited that facilities and other parts of administration are up for that work. And, yeah. and um, we're going we're gonna to do it. So. I love it. Andrew, anything else you want to tell our listeners about what the Shy Institute's doing and has in the pipeline? Well, I would say like this, this podcast is about innovation. Right. And I want to thank um, former President David Shai, who just committed a million dollar gift yeah. to us. Yeah. And, um, and that kind of support, you know, whether it's five dollars or a million dollars, helps mm -hmm. us do the things that matter most. Mm -hmm. So looking at issues around biodiversity loss and climate change and climate resilience, um, instead of having to chase grants or other ways to support our right. work, we're able to, with that kind of support, we're able to do the things that matter most. And so mm -hmm. That would be a thing that we're like, first, thank you. And for other folks out there that want to support a group doing great work in the upstate and in South Carolina, yeah. come talk to us. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Andrew, thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, Mary. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, that does it for this episode of the Classy Podcast. Remember, this podcast is brought to you through a partnership between the Hill Institute for Innovation and Entrepreneurship and the Communication Studies Department here at Furman University. It is produced by student producer Isabella Martinez, so we want to thank her for that. Remember, you can find us lots of different ways, uh, anywhere you listen to your podcast, but we're also on YouTube, so you can watch us on YouTube. And uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and do me another favor. Share uh, every episode that you like, share it with your friends and family because we want to spread the good word and the inspiration that, that all of us, all of these episodes kind of bring forth to you your listeners. Um, but until next time, I'm your host, Mary Sturgill. Dream big, everybody.